Beneath the Barcelona sky, a football colossus is rising. Over 23,000 tons of steel and 90,000 cubic meters of concrete are shaping a 105,000-seat fortress. With 3,000 workers racing against a September deadline, this is an engineering marvel on an epic scale. So, how exactly do engineers build a modern colossus like this? What incredible feats of strength and precision are happening every single day to bring this vision to life? Let's dive deep into the very bones and muscle of the new Camp Nou, the roof's crown. The stadium's future roof skeleton is a complex network of massive steel structures called trusses. These aren't just ordinary beams, they are like giant pre-made triangular frames, often engineered and built in a factory before being brought to the site. This method saves a huge amount of time during construction, allowing crews to work faster and more efficiently. Recently, only seven of these immense roof trusses remain to complete the main upper structure, with some already staged and waiting to be lifted into their final positions. Imagine each one being as long as several large trucks lined up end to end. These trusses are vital because they distribute the weight of the entire roof evenly across the stadium's walls, making sure the structure can handle heavy loads, including strong winds and the weight of future solar panels that will sit on top. The number of remaining trusses can sometimes change as the project evolves and new elements might be added, or priorities might shift, meaning the count of remaining pieces can fluctuate, reflecting the real-time adjustments on such a massive site. Look closely at the stadium's upper tiers and you will see a true engineering marvel. Cantilevers To understand a cantilever, imagine a diving board extending out over a swimming pool, supported only at one end. That's exactly how cantilever beams work in a stadium. These horizontal beams stretch out from the main structure without any supporting pillars directly underneath them. This design gives fans clear, unobstructed views of the pitch, making every seat feel closer to the action. This is especially important for the new third level, where new brackets are being hoisted to support these floating sections of the stadium. However, these large, unsupported sections present a unique challenge for engineers. They can become lively structures, meaning they might vibrate or sway from the energy of thousands of jumping and cheering fans. This isn't just about the structure holding up, it's about ensuring it feels completely solid and safe, even when the crowd is at its most energetic. Engineers use advanced computer models to predict and control these movements, carefully designing the structure to absorb and dampen vibrations, making sure the stadium feels rock-solid even during the most thunderous roars. The stadium's hidden skeleton. Before any concrete is poured, thousands of steel rods, known as rebar, are carefully placed. Think of rebar as the hidden skeleton or the muscle fibers within the concrete. Concrete is incredibly strong when you push down on it, but it is weak if you try to pull it apart or stretch it. Rebar gives concrete that crucial pulling strength, making the entire structure immensely tough and preventing cracks from forming under pressure. Massive amounts of steel rebar are being installed everywhere, from the tops of pillars to the deepest underground parking levels. If you were to lay all the rebar used in a stadium of this scale, like Wembley Stadium end-to-end, -end, it would stretch for hundreds of kilometers, far longer than a marathon race. The precise placement and length of each rebar are crucial. Engineers meticulously calculate something called development length, which is the minimum length a rebar must be embedded in the concrete to ensure it grips properly and can transfer its full strength. Without this exact grip, the rebar could slip, compromising the structure's integrity. This unseen precision is a fundamental part of the stadium's strength and safety. Building blocks of immense scale. Once the rebar is securely in place, massive concrete pumps get to work, pouring liquid concrete onto pillar tops and across vast floor areas. To give you an idea of the scale, imagine filling 36 Olympic-sized swimming pools with concrete. That's roughly the amount of concrete used in a stadium of this size, like Wembley Stadium. You will hear terms like forged panels and alveolar slabs being used on site. These are types of pre-made concrete sections, like giant, interlocking Lego bricks that are manufactured off-site in controlled environments. This pre-fabrication approach is a game-changer because it makes installation much faster on site and ensures consistent quality for every single piece. 
These slabs are used for everything from main platforms and walkways to the floors of the underground parking levels. The protective skin. As you look at the stadium's steel framework, you might notice a white coating on elevator beams and a fresh black coating being applied over previously primed steel bolts. These aren't just for decoration. The white layer is a special fireproof coating specifically designed to protect the steel structure from extreme heat in case of a fire. These coatings, often called intumescent paints, are applied in thin layers, sometimes just a few millimeters thick, about the thickness of a stack of two or three credit cards. But when exposed to the intense heat of a fire, they undergo a chemical reaction. They can expand up to 50 times their original thickness, forming a thick, insulating foam that acts as a protective barrier. This foam dramatically slows down the rate at which the steel heats up, buying precious minutes for people to escape safely from the building. The precise thickness of this coating is meticulously calculated to provide a specific fire resistance rating, ensuring that the stadium's structural integrity is maintained for a critical period during an emergency. The black coating on steel bolts, on the other hand, is for weatherproofing and aesthetics, protecting them from the elements and giving them a finished look. The stadium's outer shell is also rapidly changing, transforming its appearance. Glass panel supports are being installed around staircases and shop zones, with large glass panels arriving by truck, ready for placement. These glass elements will not only allow natural light to flood into the building, but also protect fans from wind and rain, all while contributing to the stadium's modern, open look. The facade, which is the stadium's face to the world, needs to be incredibly robust, capable of protecting the building and its occupants from diverse weather conditions and ensuring safety. The design incorporates transparent materials like glass and potentially advanced polymers such as ETFE or PTFE for the roof. These materials allow light to filter through creating a vibrant atmosphere inside while also being durable and resistant to environmental factors, the underground marvel. But the engineering marvel isn't just what you see above ground. The second underground parking phase is accelerating at lightning speed, with concrete slabs being poured and new formwork installed. This isn't just about digging a big hole. It often involves a sophisticated, top-down construction method. In top-down construction, engineers build the ground floor slab first, creating a sturdy lid over the site. Then, they excavate underneath this slab, building basement levels downwards while construction on the upper levels can start simultaneously. It's like building a cake from the top layer down, but still adding frosting to the top while the lower layers are being baked. This method is a lifesaver in crowded city areas like Barcelona because it significantly minimizes disruption on the surface, reduces noise and dust, and speeds up the overall project by allowing multiple teams to work at once. This complex dance of digging, pouring concrete slabs, and laying reinforcement mesh like Farala is happening deep below creating a massive new parking labyrinth that will efficiently manage the flow of thousands of vehicles. Safety and Access Zones As the stadium gets closer to opening, ensuring public access and safety is a huge focus. You can see New Jersey barriers being positioned everywhere. These aren't just simple concrete blocks. They are specially designed barriers, named after the U.S. state where they were first used to separate highway lanes. In the stadium, they act like strong, temporary walls, guiding crowds safely, defining circulation paths for fans and staff, and protecting workers from ongoing construction activities. Their unique shape minimizes vehicle damage in case of accidental contact while preventing crossovers. Beyond these barriers, intricate networks of exterior staircases are being reinforced and handrails are being installed across multiple levels. Even the iconic red spiral staircases are nearly complete. Prefabricated steps are being delivered for VIP areas and protective netting is going up to ensure safety. These meticulous details are all about making sure that when thousands of fans return, they can move smoothly, safely, and comfortably through the stadium, from the parking levels to their seats. Every element is designed to manage large crowds and provide a seamless experience. The current Camp No renovation, part of the larger Espy Barca project, is a truly massive undertaking. The club initially hoped to return to a partially completed stadium by August 10th for the Joan Gamper Trophy. 
However, this date was later pushed back to September 14th for the first La Liga home match. The full renovation, including the new roof, isn't expected to be completely finished until June 2026 or even later, possibly 2027 or 2028. This entire Espy Barca project comes with a staggering price tag. The total financing is around 1.45 billion euros, with the construction itself costing about 960 million euros. To manage this colossal investment, FC Barcelona has secured funding from a group of 20 investors and has even refinanced a significant chunk of its debt, extending repayment timelines out to 2033 and beyond, with an average interest cost of 5.19%. The club expects the renovated stadium to generate a huge increase in annual revenue, from around 100 to 150 million euros to 200 to 250 million euros per season. This projected new income is absolutely crucial for the club's financial health and its ability to compete at the highest level in world football. The success and timely completion of the construction project are directly linked to the club's long-term financial stability and its sporting competitiveness. However, the project hasn't been without its critics. Delays have sparked internal debate with some questioning the management of unforeseen circumstances. During the renovation, the club has been playing its home matches at the Estadi Olympic Luis Companies, which has its own logistical and financial impacts. The pressure is immense, not just to be ready for La Liga matches, but also for the Champions League group stage, which kicks off in mid-September. If you found this deep dive into Camp News Engineering Marvel fascinating, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel for more real-time updates, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single detail. Let us know in the comments, what part of the new camp know are you most excited to see?